Hey, how's it going? This is Dan uh, from modular.dev and today we're going to be going over creating a checkers game in Blazor. So um, definitely an interesting uh, application. I'm, I'm kind of excited for it. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a checkers game and I think in the future, probably not this video because there's a lot to do, but maybe in the next one we're going to go ahead and add a multiplayer component to it. Uh, in which case you could have two players playing over the internet with a signal or connection. Um, so that'll be fun, but I don't think uh, we're going to try to tackle that today. Uh, we're just going to get the basic setup, get the pieces moving, and uh, and we'll, we'll see how far we get. Um, as always, uh, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. And um, also, I would also recommend checking out the comments after the video or maybe before you watch it. Sometimes, you know, as we're as I'm live streaming, I come up with a better idea or a better way to do it, or maybe somebody else does. Um, so I'll go ahead and check those out and see if there's any um, tips or tricks that uh, somebody else or maybe I found on how to make the application better or smoother. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to create a new Blazor app, and I'm just going to call it Checkers. I'm going to put it uh, in a different folder, and let's create that. Okay, Blazor WebAssembly is fine. We're going to do ASP.NET Core hosted because, like I said, I think we want to do um, we want to do uh, some Signal R connections. So let's go ahead and try that and a progressive web application as well. And I apologize; it looks like I may be having some dropped frames. Um, so hopefully that's not an issue. Um, but let's go ahead and continue on, anyways. Um, Let's create that project. Okay. And just to make sure we got everything up and running successfully, let's go ahead and run this application. All right. Looks like everything's working. We got this kind of standard home counter fetch data thing that you normally see with a Blazor app. So let's go ahead and uh, make some changes to it then. So we don't really need the counter or the fetch data. I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. And on the navigation, we don't really need those in the navigation either. So what we're mainly concerned about is this index.razor. I'm going to go ahead though and actually make a component for the checker board. Um, you probably don't really have to do this, but just in case you want to ever put this on um, a different application, you're not going to be tied to that page. Um, so in here then, I'm just going to say checkerboard, and we should be good to go. Now let's go ahead and try setting up the checkerboard first of all. Um, so what I want to do is have a, a div. Let's go ahead and... Um, do four int i equals zero, i less than eight, because the checkerboard has eight um, columns and eight rows. So we're going to do two for loops, uh, one on the outside and one on the inside. Hey, good good to see you, Argy. Uh, I'm glad you love the stuff. We're going to go ahead and try this Blazor checkerboard, so I hope you like that too. Um, good to see you on. Hopefully, I'm getting some things saying that I'm having some dropped frames, so hopefully uh, it's smooth for you. Let me know if it's not. Um, hopefully it's just uh, my computer being a little weird. But uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, do this now. we got eight rows and eight columns. So if we go ahead and put a div here, um, that'll kind of be where we fill in some of this stuff. And as far as CSS goes, I'm going to just put it in this CSS folder. You could use... Um, you know, checkerboard.razor.css, um, but I kind of don't like to do that just because those CSS files get compiled and um, it does take a little bit of time to do that. So I'm just going to put it in this CSS folder. So checkers.css. All right. Now, again, we have, we have rows and columns. I'm going to go ahead and close these other ones so I don't get confused. And also, I should probably zoom in a bit. That probably would help. All right, so 
we got this uh, we got this here and I'm gonna go ahead and put a div on the outside and I'm gonna give that a class of row and I'll put that right there this for loop we'll give this div a class of cell so we're gonna have eight rows and then eight cells within each row on the checkers.css we're gonna give the row um, well, we'll come back to row in a second, but for the cell, we're going to give each cell a height of 80 pixels, a width of 80 pixels, and let's give it a padding of 10 pixels, and a border of 1 pixel solid black. So, oh yeah, we also have to add this checkers.css to our index.html. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so if we did that all correctly, we should just see uh, eight blank cells by eight blank cells. Let's go ahead and try. Okay, good. That's kind of what I was hoping for. So we're, we're off to the, a good start here. Let's go ahead and uh, put some styling on these rows. So uh, let's go ahead and do row nth child 2n plus 1, um, and that'll give us every other row. And then within that, we'll go cell nth child 2n plus 1 as well. And we'll go ahead and give this a background of tan. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just coloring this checkerboard, right? So that'll give us the odd cells. Um, here we're going to do the even cells. And I'm just going to do a light gray here. And I pretty much copy this and do this for the even rows. And I think these have to be switched around. Let's go ahead and, and try that. Okay. Um, I think we're backwards. I think we're backwards. Uh, I think this needs to be 2n plus 1. And this needs to be 2n. Let's try reloading that. There. I think that's the right checkerboard. I think so. Okay. So we got uh, these squares here. They're, they're tan. Um, and the other ones that we will not have checkers on will be white. Uh, or this really light gray. So let's go ahead then and populate this checkerboard with some checkers. So on the we're going to start a code block here and we'll just create a list of checker which we don't have that yet let's go ahead and create that object i'm just going to make a folder here data checker.cs and this checker object i think what we want to do is we want to have a public int row and a public int column and a public, uh, we want to have the direction that the checker currently is going. Um, but let's go ahead and, and make that an enum. Um, so public enum checker direction down, up, or both. In the case if you're a king, then you could go both up and down. Um, so there we go, public checker direction direction how about that okay so we have um, a class of checker and they got a row and a column and a direction um, you know maybe maybe I should put a color on there but uh, yeah yeah let's put color on there public uh, string color and we'll just put we'll just put white or black on there depending on which one it is so here then uh, what we want to do is well it's we got to add this to our to our using statement. So using um, checkers dot client dot data. That is the right namespace there. So list of checkers. We'll call this uh, black checkers equals new list, and we'll do the same thing for white. All right. Um, on the 
on the oninitialized method, what are we going to do? We got to populate these. Um, so let's go ahead and um, oops, override, protected override um, on initialize. So what we want to do is we want to populate the black ones first, and they're going to be um, they're going to be on rows zero, one, and two. So let's go ahead and do for int i equals zero, i less than two. No, less than three, i plus plus. And that should give us the first three rows. And then here, we're going to do uh, for int j equals, um, let's do i plus one modulo, uh, modulo two. And what that's going to do is, so if we're on the first row, uh, this is going to, you know, it's going to be zero. So zero plus one is going to be one. And one modulo two is going to be the second, um, the second item on the board, which if you remember the board uh, would be right here. Now, if, if we were on maybe the second row, we want to use that we want this to be our starting point so in this case uh, the row is one so one plus one would be here modulo two is going to get us back to here so it's a, li a little bit of wacky math but uh, I think it works out I, I did I did test that a little bit beforehand um, just to make sure I wasn't going to get confused and then we'll go ahead and do j less than eight j plus equal two because right there's not a checker on every space it's every other space um, we'll see if I got this right if, we, if I didn't we'll make an adjustment here so black checkers dot add new checker and that's gonna have a color of black it's gonna have a column of J it's gonna have a row of I and it's gonna have a direction of down I believe it's gonna go it's going down yep it's going down the board and hopefully that's right let's go ahead and uh, put some code in here to get the checker at this row column combination so var checker equals black checkers um, we're getting some IntelliSense errors but that's okay I think we're still okay. First or default n n dot uh, column equals j and n dot row equals i. That should give us the checker at this position. Let's see if we get uh, does not contain first oh first or default there we go that should be right so if, if a checker exists it's going to have a value if it doesn't it's going to be null so um, if checker not equal null we'll just put another div in here I know you probably shouldn't use divs for everything but hey they're the easiest right so uh, we'll give it a class of checker and we'll also give it the class of checker dot color um, just because we will need to know the color at some point, so might as well put it in there as a class name. Um, and now in our checkers.css, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a checker class here. And what do we do? We did 80 before. I don't, I don't think we need this anymore. We did 80 for the cell width and height with a padding of 10. So in this case, this checker should have a width of 60 and a height of 60. And we'll give it a border radius of 50% to make it a circle. And we'll go ahead and give it a background. Uh, no, we won't give it a background here. We'll give it a border of one pixel solid black. So just so we can see how this looks, let's go ahead and run this. Um, see how we did. Okay, so we got all the checkers on the right spots, uh, which kind of frankly amazes me that we got that right on uh, the first try. Um, but hey. Sometimes that happens. Um, let's go ahead and put checker um, dot black then, because that's the that's the class name we gave it for black, and we'll put a background of 
zero, zero, zero. And now let's go ahead and add a white, some white checkers as well. So same kind of for loop here. Um, but instead of going from zero to three, we're going from five to eight, because those are the rows that the white checkers are on. And we'll put white for that color. Um, so then here, we need to say if checker is null, then we're going to try to get it from the white list. So white, uh, let's just go ahead and copy that. So if, if there was no black checkers at this location, we're going to go ahead and grab it from the white checkers list and hopefully, hopefully we get one of them. Um, and there we go. Let's go ahead and um, add white to our color scheme here. So uh, checker.white we'll put as FFF for white. And let's see what we get. All right, look at that. Um, we got a checkerboard all filled out now. Um, so let's go ahead and try to move these things around. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, basically when you click on a checker, um, it will kind of determine what active spots it has. Um, and those maybe should be highlighted. Um, and then if you click on one of those active spots, it moves there. So let's go ahead and add some click events to our checkers. Um, so this div here, uh, we'll put on click and we'll say, I think we want what we want to do, I think, is keep track of what the active checker is. So I'm going to kind of minimize this so it doesn't get in the way. We'll say checker active checker equals null. And when you click on it, um, when you click on it, then uh, you'll put active checker equal to that current that current checker. And I think uh, I think that's probably good enough. Um, let's go ahead and. Uh, maybe put an additional class name on here just so we can see which is one which one is our active one um, I'm gonna probably put this on a different line it's getting a little bit lengthy so um, checker equals active checker and if that's so it'll say we'll put a class of active on it otherwise we will put nothing um, all right so then here checker.active let's go ahead and put uh, let's put a, a border of two pixels solid blue I don't know just so it's a little bit different and let's see if we get the let's see if we get this uh, clicking mechanism working and does it does seem to be working I don't know hopefully you can see that uh, you're getting a little bit of a blue ring around there uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit uh, bigger, a little bit more obvious. Um, let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, teal. I don't know. There we go. Good enough. Um, so now we know what the active checker is, and if you notice, whenever we click a different one, uh, the one that was active is no longer active, and that's what we're going to use to determine what spaces we can go to. Um, so if we are this checker, obviously we can't go anywhere other than these two spaces. And similarly, if we're this one, we can only go to these two spaces. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Um, so what we want to do then is on this cell, I think what we want to do is determine if this cell can be moved to. So in this case, um, let's set a bool here. Can move here. I don't know. Set to false. And so the checker, the active checker, has a column and it has a row. 
So what we can do, and it also has a direction. So what we need to do is figure out if we're even in the right row, and if we are, if we're in the right column. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. Um, so let's say uh, int row equals active checker. Whoa. Active checker dot row. And obviously we do need to do some null checking here. So um, if active checker not null, we don't want to run into any problems. Um, we'll say active checker dot row um, plus one. And we're going to do that times checker direction dot um, down. Well, let me think. We want to do one times if uh, active checker dot checker it dot direction equals equals checker direction dot down. Then we're gonna not if <laughs> sorry. We're gonna use a ter a ter ternary operator. So if that's the case, we're gonna do times one, otherwise negative one. And that should give us the row that that checker can move to, eh, as long as I did that right. Um, I think I did. So it's gonna be the current row plus one times either one or negative one, depending on which direction it can go. Um, we will account for kings later, but um, this should be good enough for now. So we'll say if, and then, well, okay. The checker, the active checker also has a column. And we'll go ahead and put, uh, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and put a list of int for rows possible. And we'll just set that equal to that. And we'll do the same thing for columns. And what we're going to do is just add this. Because when we do have to account for kings, this will make it easier because we'll have a list of rows. Now for columns, we want to do a similar type of thing. So columns possible dot add. Um, active checker dot column minus one. And also active checker dot column plus one. Because if you think about a board, you know, if we get our board up here, this one's in column two because zero one two it can move to column one or column three so we're taking that column minusing one adding one those are the two it can move to um, and you know what um, this whole thing we probably don't need to do each time through the for loop uh, Yeah, let's, we should probably move that out, huh? Um, let's go ahead and put that in a function. And let's just call it uh, void evaluate checker um, spots. I don't know. And we'll throw that in here. And so after we set the active checker to the current one, we'll go ahead and reevaluate that. Um, and that should that should give us those values so now uh, and actually sorry we got to put that outside here otherwise it'll be out of scope and we'll also have to clear it at the start of the function otherwise we'll get too many in there we'll just never clear it out um, so what we're gonna do then is for each spot we're gonna say okay can this move here um, we're gonna say it can move here if um, if i, which is the current row, and j are in these two things. So rows possible dot um, contains i, 
and rows and columns possible dot contains j and we may have to adjust this logic I'm, I'm fully aware we may have to adjust this logic when it comes to jumping um, but for right now this should be okay so we'll, what we'll do then is we'll say um, we'll put a, a ternary operator in here if it can move here we'll put this as an active cell otherwise an inactive cell and let's just go ahead and try putting some uh, something on there um, cell dot active let's go ahead and put a border of three pixels solid blue just to see if we get if we have this logic correct and if we do then we'll uh, we'll do some some other things on it so we click this oh it looks like we're going the wrong way here um, not too bad though um, not too bad it's just the white pieces are moving the wrong direction and I think it's probably because uh, here when I created them in the on initialized I have them moving down which they should be moving up so let's go ahead and, uh, and try that again okay hey there we go cool so what we want to do then is we want to determine all right I'm gonna close this down again so what we want to do then is determine if they click the cell that's active um, then we should move that checker so we'll put an on click here and we'll put uh, this this might be somewhat of a lengthy function so let's go ahead and um, yeah let's go ahead and do this if uh, let's see if actually you know what I think this is going to be a fairly long function I should probably put it out here um, because that's going to be a lot to inline so let's go ahead and say void move checker and we'll give it an int row int column that should be good so yeah so we'll, we'll put that same thing up here we have to do it both ways just because uh, we need to have that active thing um, as a class but let's go ahead and put uh, I'm going to put it up there and move checker as well. Now on the on click, what we're going to do is we're going to just call, um, um, what did I call that? Move checker, and we'll put uh, I and J in there. Okay. Now in move checker, all we have to do, um, I've got to change this to row and column. Now all we should have to do is say if not can move here return we're just kind of handling at the case where maybe they tried moving it to a place they can't move it to um, otherwise what we're going to do is we're going to set active checker dot um, column equals column active checker dot row equals row and we'll just set active checker back equal to null after we do that and because things are passed around by reference in C Sharp, we're able to do that because this should have a reference to the original checker. We change the column in the row, and then we just kind of null out this one. Uh, you know, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens here. All right, so we click this one. It says these are two active spots. Oh, it doesn't work. Um, let's see. Do we get any errors? No. Um, hmm. let's go ahead and see I'm just going to do a quick uh, council.write line here just to make sure um, we're getting in there successfully now you could debug it as well um, but this is such a simple test that I don't think I need to worry about debugging it 
All right, go over to your console and your JavaScript console, and let's see what we get here. Row eight, column eight. Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense um, because this for loop is still moving on afterwards. And, you know, if we check this INJ value at the time it's been clicked, it's actually eight. Uh, so we need to, we need to declare a local version of this. Um, int local I equals I and int local J equal J. And, and that way we can pass these in. Otherwise it's getting out of scope, not out of scope. Um, this keeps going and, and, you know, I think you know what I mean. We'll see. We'll see if this works. Hey, there we go. Hey, that actually works pretty well. Um, I think we need to get rid of this uh, this active column thing here, active cell here. Um, so after it moves, not only do we have to null out the active checker, but we need to um, we need to call evaluate checker spots again, just because those have also changed. Whoops, I did not mean to debug. Oh well. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, so in that case, we have to worry about jumping still, but Hey, we, we actually got quite a ways for today. Um, I think that's probably a good place to stop, but, uh, next time we're going to cover jumping and maybe we'll get into a little bit of a uh, multiplayer setting up a signal R connection, that type of thing. So I hope you enjoyed it and, uh, definitely feel free to reach out, uh, with questions that you may have and, uh, we'll see you next time.